In this deep dive, we'll go through the API design, starting from the basics and advancing towards the best practices that define exceptional APIs. As a developer, you're likely familiar with many of these concepts, but I'll provide a detailed explanation to deepen your understanding. Let's consider an API for an e-commerce platform like Shopify, which if you're not familiar with, is a well-known e-commerce platform that allows businesses to set up online stores. In API design, we are concerned with defining the inputs, like product details for a new product, which is provided by a seller, and the outputs, like the information returned when someone queries a product of an API. So the focus is mainly on defining how the CRUD operations are exposed to the user interface. CRUD stands for Create, Read, Update and Delete, which are basic operations of any data-driven application. For example, to add a new product, we need to send a POST request to slash API slash products, where the product details are sent in the request body. To retrieve these products, we need to send a GET request to slash API slash products. For updating, we use PUT or PATCH requests to slash products slash the ID of that product. And removing is similar to updating, it's again slash products slash ID of the product we need to remove. And similarly, we might also have another GET request to slash product slash ID which fetches the single product. Another part is to decide on the communication protocol that will be used, like HTTP, WebSockets or other protocols, and the data transport mechanism which can be JSON, XML or protocol buffers. This is usually the case for RESTful APIs, but we also have GraphQL and gRPC paradigms, so APIs come in different paradigms, each with its own set of protocols and standards. The most common one is REST, which stands for Representational State Transfer. It is stateless, which means that each request from a client to a server must contain all the information needed to understand and complete the request. It uses standard HTTP methods, GET, POST, PUT and DELETE. And it's easily consumable by different clients, browsers or mobile apps. The downside of RESTful APIs is that they can lead to overfetching or underfetching of data because more endpoints may be required to access specific data. And usually RESTful APIs use JSON for data exchange. On the other hand, GraphQL APIs allow clients to request exactly what they need, avoiding overfetching and underfetching data. They have strongly typed queries, but complex queries can impact server performance and all the requests are sent as POST requests and GraphQL API typically responds with HTTP 200 status code even in case of errors with error details in the response body. gRPC stands for Google Remote Procedure Call which is built on HTTP 2 which provides advanced features like multiplexing and server push. It uses protocol buffers which is a way of serializing structured data and because of that it's efficient in terms of bandwidth and resources, especially suitable for microservices. The downside is that it's less human readable compared to JSON and it requires HTTP2 support to operate. In an e-commerce setting you might have relationships like user to orders or orders to products and you need to design endpoints to reflect these relationships. For example, to fetch the orders for a specific user, you need to query to get slash users slash the user ID slash orders. Common queries also include limit and offset for pagination or start and end date for filtering products within a certain date range. This allows users or the client to retrieve specific sets of data without overwhelming the system. A well-designed GET request should be item ponent, meaning calling it multiple times doesn't change the result and it should always return the same result. And GET requests should never mutate data, they are meant only for retrieval. If you need to update or create a data, you need to do a PUT or POST request. When modifying endpoints, it's important to maintain backward compatibility. This means that we need to ensure that changes don't break existing clients. A common practice is to introduce new versions, like version 2 products, so that the version 1 API can still serve the old clients, and version 2 API should serve the current clients. This is in case of RESTful APIs. In the case of GraphQL APIs, adding new fields like v2 fields without removing old one helps in evolving the API without breaking existing clients. 
Another best practice is to set rate limitations. This can prevent the API from DDoS attacks. It is used to control the number of requests a user can make in certain time frame, and it prevents a single user from sending too many requests to your single API. A common practice is to also set course settings, which stands for cross-origin resource sharing. With course settings, you can control which domains can access to your API, preventing unwanted cross-site interactions. API design is just one part of system design interview. If you'd like to learn more about the other concepts, I recommend you check out these system design concepts next.